fresh philanthropic capital to help generate the three trillion U.S. dollars needed each year from public and private sources to tackle climate change and nature losses. Nine leading industrial clusters in China, Indonesia, Japan, Spain, and the U.S. have joined the forums transitioning industrial clusters towards net zero initiative to help industry reduce emissions. The Global Battery Alliance launched a proof of concept for its battery passport to help facilitate the rapid scaling of sustainable, circular, responsible battery value chains. Important steps have also been taken to support global public health. 39 organizations this week signed Global Health Equity Network Zero Health Gaps Pledge and committed to take concerted action to advance health and equity globally. The World Economic Forum also launched its first thematic center on healthcare and life sciences in Telangana, India. As leaders, we grapple to address the complexities and interconnected challenges when it comes to innovation and technologies. And we took initiatives also in this field. The Forum unveiled a new center for trustworthy technology in Austin, Texas, to promote responsible production and use of emerging technologies such as AI, machine learning, blockchain, virtual reality, and quantum computing. The new Global Cybersecurity Outlook report that was presented provided a roadmap for leaders as they grapple with new cybersecurity threats. Ten water-focused entrepreneurs were chosen winners of the firm's Global Freshwater Innovation Challenge for their solutions to improve freshwater resilience in the face of climate change and restore water quality around the world. And the Schwab Foundation from this platform for social entrepreneurs awarded 16 organizations for their innovative approach and potential for global impact, joining a community of 435 innovators operating in 190 different countries. Congratulations to the chairperson, Hilde Herr Schwab. As the panel also touched on, the war in Ukraine also um, is one of the big, big challenges of our time. And we also paid attention to the war during this week, and leaders discussed how to scale up the labor market integration of Ukrainian refugees based on new lessons from the forum's refugee employment and employability initiative. And the forum continues to support the dialogue between private sector leaders and Ukraine's political leadership to support reconstruction efforts. And uh, Kristalina, you were also at the COs for Ukraine initiative meeting again. It was 70 COs in the room with the first lady and ministers really looking at how we can support also to avoid a total humanitarian catastrophe unfolding in Ukraine. And we work to unlock progress in different conflicts areas in the world, in the Middle East. We continued our work for reconciliation between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, you know this uh, initiative that we have worked on for many years. And private sector Palestinian and Israeli leaders today came together this morning and endorsed the communique, reinforcing their commitment to supporting the Palestinian economy. And we brought leaders together to strengthen the dialogue in the Western Balkans and to address the political crisis in Myanmar. We also accelerated efforts to strengthen regional collaboration. The forum convened global business leaders for the third meeting of the forum's friends of the African continental free trade area and agreed to develop an action plan for strengthening implementation of this agreement. If successfully implemented, it can create 30 to 40 million new jobs in the coming years in Africa. I'm so heartened 
our community of young leaders has been working together to forge solutions also this week. And uh, more locally, it is also great to see that we will have a Global Shapers Hub now in Davos. So the Davos Hub of Young Global Shapers were, was formed, and I think some of you are here in the room today too. So congratulations. <laughs> Finally, I know it's been a long list, but we're very proud of it. You also show that this has been a working meeting where we have rolled up our sleeves. Finally, the forum in partnership with Accenture and Microsoft unveiled a working prototype of the Global Collaborative Collaboration Village, a purpose-driven metaverse where organizations can convene to action on the world's most pressing challenges. So, as I said, I'm so proud that we close this meeting on such a positive note with uh, so much energy. I hope it fuels our actions and ambitions in the year ahead. Because in an uncertain and challenging time, one thing is clear. We can shape a more resilient, sustainable, and equitable future, but the only way to do so is together. Thank you. We see rising inflation.